Daddy, I want to be big and strong like you. This is uh, something many little boys will look at their daddy and say. Daddy, I want to be big and strong like you. Today, ironically, we're asked to think about and celebrate smallness in many ways. This is Jesus talking when he says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of the seeds. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of the plants and puts forth large branches. That small little mustard seed packs a punch. That small little mustard seed grew up into be what is the kingdom of God, the church. And so we very much believe that our faith started as a small little seed, a small little embryo, if you will, inside our blessed mother's womb and changed the world. But that seed at his burial was buried in the ground of Jerusalem, rose from the dead, and has become the church and has become the church. And the church so big and successful changing the world that one theologian said, even those who hate her, even those who hate the church, imitate her structures, schools, universities, hospitals, hospices, all started from that tiny little small seed. You know, I'm reminded of even if you ever see uh, pictures of Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa was about 4'9". She's about this big. And people used to look at her in the 70s and 80s and go, that little woman is the one that's caused all these ripples here in Calcutta and around the world. The usual response was, don't let the size fool you. She packs a punch. She's tiny but strong, amazingly strong. It is all part of that little seed that continues to grow. That in the culture around us, we Catholics have to remind ourselves and the world that many of that started from Christianity, from Catholicism. When I was in England, the Canterbury Cathedral, this magnificent cathedral, uh, built almost a thousand years ago, the Canterbury Cathedral is now Anglican, but like most things, it used to be Catholic. But this big poster outside called the Mystery Plays. Now, what are mystery plays? Well, in the Middle Ages, in churches, they'd have little drama uh, com companies, and they would get up on the altar and act out stories in the Bible. They were called mystery plays. The beginnings of the theater was started in the church. And even art, to remember that even these stained glass windows for centuries with a Bible of the illiterate, not everybody could read. But even music, I was reminded by one of my music teachers, I was not a very good musician, but even reading music, this non-Catholic, non-believing teacher said, yeah, it was the first music was written down for church. Yeah, some little monk by himself singing the Psalms in Gregorian chant was trying to measure it. So I said to her, yeah, we invented music. You're welcome. <laughs> Hospitals and hospices and all these things grow from small seed. And we have to remind ourselves and the world that it is the church that built Western civilization. There's a great book out there by Thomas Woods. It has a book by that very name, How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization. There's another great book by a, uh, a chemist who has a PhD in chemistry, Stacy Tresenkos. She came here, and she started telling us that she was a non-believer, but because of her work in chemistry, getting her PhD, she realized that modern medicine, was science itself, was birthed from Christianity, was born of Christianity. Don't let anybody ever tell you any different. It was this seed, his seed, 
that that small seed of Jesus grew into 12, a tiny little group of 12 apostles into a great tree. That it really does take Catholic eyes to see the echoes of the church around us. Whenever I go to a school and watch, you know, a football game or a volleyball game or something, usually the school will play their alma mater. And I'll say, well, what is that? Oh, that's our school song, the alma mater. I will say, okay, that's a Latin word. Alma mater means mother of my soul. Who is the mother of your soul? Well, that grew out of a Catholic scholasticism to remind us that schools were based to find out about God, the church, the world. And even some ways, the world gives us tacit credence when it mocks us, even using words. Now, you look around, especially at around Halloween, there's a movie that'll come around, and magicians will use this term, hocus pocus. Where does that come from? Well, back in England especially, Protestants used to make fun of what went on here at the, at the altar. They say those Catholics do that hocus pocus on their altar. And where does that come from? Well, that's mocking the mass because this is my body is hoc es einem corpus meum. Even tacitly, they're mocking the mass and taking that into their regular lexicon. But as we hear today, again in the gospel, that this small seed has grown into a large tree with lots of branches, and you're part of that branches. You're part of that fruit. And you're part, asked also to be seed, to grow where you have been planted, to, pro to produce fruit. And don't be fooled by your own size and think, I'm too small, I'm nobody. Like I said, your faith can pack a punch. Because today we celebrate smallness, even if you feel small. You know, I was reminded also that when someone says, you know, there were big crowds today, whether it was at church or at a concert or whatever, even at these political rallies, whenever anybody says to me, there were big crowds today, that means nothing anymore to me. Because I have seen big crowds. In 2008, I went to World Youth Day, and there was 500,000 people there, which is both wonderful and difficult. In 2016, I went to World, Day, World Youth Day in Poland, and you sleep with two and a half million people. Two and a half million people. You couldn't see the end of the crowds. I even have a video that I show people that was going like this. I couldn't see the end which is both awesome and difficult. You know what it's like when two and a half million people have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> wow, that's logistical nightmare. However, there was one point during the night at World Youth Day that they brought out the Blessed Sacrament, a host about this big. And I saw two and a half million people bow down and pray and worship on their knees. All these people, several million Bowing to something very tiny in comparison to them in worship around the Eucharist. So today, as we remember that little boy says, Daddy, I want to be big and strong like you, to remind ourselves that he made himself small and strong, that your smallness should pack a punch, your faith should pack a punch, even though you feel small, because that's what happens here at the altar. God, who we're always here, you know, God is big enough for fill in the blank. God is big enough. We know that. But in the womb of a woman, he made himself small. And here at the altar, he continues to make himself small into a little tasteless and colorless host that we bow down before that. And then when we hear, this is my body, we say, Amen. We say, amen, thank you for making yourself small. And in his smallness, he renews us. He changes us. He reminds us, makes himself part, us part of his body to in a small way 
Go change the world. Because your faith should pack a punch. Even if you feel small. So as today is we reminded the role of fathers. You know a few weeks ago we, we celebrated motherhood. And then that mothers make us human. Mothers remind us of God's love and care. But it is fathers that send us out. It is fathers that give us courage. It is fathers that say, no, you're going to be fine. Get out there. I, I tell this story a lot, but I, it, all, it for me was a powerful image of the difference between mothers and fathers. My own brother and sister-in-law holding my nephew and seeing my brother throw my nephew up into the air. And my sister-in-law go, ooh. And him catch him. There it is. Fathers, you meant to send them on. Even in a small way. And I would say to the fathers here, especially if you're fathers of grown children, you might feel like failures, if you're, especially if your kids have left the faith. And we, I know there's many people in here like that. You may feel, well, I've done my job, and it is over. And what can I do now? No, you can pray and fast. And praying and fasting packs a punch, especially for your own children. But you can also encourage, pray for, disciple, mentor a young person, even if it's just one. Even if it's just one, that they have someone in their lives Someone in their lives who loves the Lord, that can change them. That has an effect. And to remember, this goes for moms too, but especially for dads, the most influential person in a child's life is the same-sex parent. Let me say that again. The most influential person in a child's life is a same-sex parent. That small little child might change the world. And you can be a part of that. I'm reminded sometimes how smallness can be powerful, even a little bit aggravating. Some people wonder why we cover the chalice with a paw. You've seen that. Well, wine attracts flies. That's why we do that. But I'm reminded when I'm saying mass, every once in a while, there'll be a tiny little fly who's dive bombing my head. I'm thinking, how is this fly causing me so much anxiety? If that little fly can cause me anxiety, you can cause the devil all kinds of anxiety. You can cause the world who has swallowed all kinds of poison some anxiety to push back a little bit and never think, wow, I'm too small for that. No, no. You might be small size-wise, Influential-wise, percentage-wise, but never underestimate what God can do through you. He can do great things to build up the kingdom of God. So as I remember and celebrate you, fathers, we'll have a, a prayer for you in just a moment. For all of us, fathers, mothers, everybody, to look up there at the Lord and say the same thing. Jesus, help me to be as potent. Help me to be brave. Help me to be small and strong like you.